hopefully nice. hopefully that's true. Uh, so this this is the first time we're doing this. This is uh, kind of like collab of the generations. Uh, everyone is going to talk about this one. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're doing this on multiple streams at the same time. So if you're a fan of uh, Danny, you're watching it on his channel. If, if you uh, subscribe to me, you're watching it on my channel. Uh, we'll probably have like description and all of that on the, all the like links to each other. But for now, you're getting the same stream uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> for both of them. So yeah. uh, I'm going to be playing the role of kind of like senior developer here. And Danny is uh, uh, going to play a role of a junior developer. And we're going to talk about uh, like technologies that are uh newer interesting like uh, promising <laughs> right mm -hmm. everyone is uh kind of like talking about it now with, with astro so uh danny if you can kind of like describe what you <laughs> what mm -hmm. you what you know about it and like what you want to learn i guess yeah so uh definitely i keep my pulse on uh finger on the pulse of tech twitter and recently astro has just really been gaining a ton of momentum in such a short period of time. I mean, it's been out for a couple of years or a year at least. And um, I've been hearing about hydration and islands architecture and all that stuff. And Ben Holmes, the guy who used to, he created a plugin called Slinkity for the 11T static side generator. And he is now working at Astro. <laughs> so that also got me interested because... Um, I was looking at 11T and just trying to figure out what is this static site generation, Hugo Jekyll, this whole, it's almost like an alternate reality. Of, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's the spas and everybody went that way, but then there's this other way where it's like HTML first and they don't care that. I think one of the differences between MPAs and SPAs that I found really fascinating was the MPA, if you hit anything, it'll reload the page. The little arrow will, will hit into an X. And um, whereas with the spa, the navigation is just so quick, right? So that was a feature that I was like, that's really cool that spas have it. I'm kind of bothered that 11T and all that doesn't have it. But then I went to eBay, which uses Marco, which is a static site generator. And I was clicking through it and I was like, if I didn't know that this was an SPA, I would think it was an SPA. The performance was that good. So yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, okay, Astro, you guys guarantee amazing performance. That's super awesome. I think React really needs you. <laughs> I'm using Vue with Vitesse, the Vitesse template by Anthony Fu, and he added the static site gen, uh, generator plugin. And on Lighthouse, um, my website's scoring in the 90s. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe I don't, I don't think Astro is right for my personal blog site because in my labs and blogs, I install um, all sorts of packages just for one lab. So I, I need code splitting for sure, but it just seems like um, the tests and view are handling it well. So I'm skeptical. Like I don't, the only reason I'd use Isles, which we're gonna look at in a second, or Astro is like they say for content heavy site that doesn't have too much dynamic interactivity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and since you're such a big fan of Vue, I, I I decided to to do it with uh with Isles instead of Astro, which almost almost is the same thing, but in some ways it's not. Uh, the problem with Isles is that it's like less used software and it's like less less polished. But I mean, like just a few months ago, Astro wasn't like a one point oh also. So it's yeah. it's it's like it's early technology, but I, I think it, you're going to be like just more comfortable with uh, looking through it. Mm -hmm. So um, so let's share let's share your screen and let's uh, let's try to kind of like uh, <laughs> go go through this. And uh, I'm I'm just curious to uh, to see with your own kind of like fresh eyes. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, they are not that fresh. You said that you're kind of like following Astro and like uh, watch some tutorials, so uh, you, you will probably like know more than some people. But yeah, yeah I think it, it should be like a cool, cool experience to uh, just to go through this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had heard of Isles um, uh, months ago, 
but you mentioned it today and i was like oh yeah isles i did remember that but i didn't realize that it's doing a lot of what astro is trying to do yeah, yeah yeah that's fascinating yeah so here we are on the uh website and i usually will just scan down here and now i'm a i'm a window a tab hoarder so i'll just like save those partial hydration ship javascript only for the interactive bits by default that's zero that's just like astro yep yep and it works with view preact solids felt no react hmm. yeah i actually asked them on twitter and they're like it's like why would you use react like <laughs> <laughs> they were they're like they were offended by the idea oh gosh that's hilarious yeah Front end framework politics. Okay. Markdown support. Yeah. Vitesse, I started using markdown support and now I'm like, I can't live without it. Batteries include layouts, routing. So this sounds like a lot like Vitesse, except for this part. And also like Astro. So it's, 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 it's yeah. yeah. I think more people need to use Vitesse. They'll just be blown away. <laughs> All right. So it uses MDX for their markdown. Client directives just like Astro. This site is built with aisles. And it actually has pretty good uh, lights, lighthouse scores, even though they're like, uh, they're uh, like Astro has better ones, but they have their docs and their, oh no. <laughs> Sorry, also it was freezing in here. That uh, that's fine. Yeah, so, so Astro uh, actually like also has a pretty good scores, but Astro uh, Astro has like a separate docs uh, website, so it's it's a bit like uh, easier, I guess, on the load. But uh, IELTS is like including docs right in the front page, so it's it's I, I don't know. They probably got like. A few points for that but so they don't have like 100 they have like 97 or something like that so it's mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's it's a it's a like a faster uh, it's fast site that's that's uh interesting yeah i mean when i look at this little loader uh button it's not is it acting yeah. as an spa right now uh, I, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. haven't looked at the at the like uh, of source code of this website, but yeah, it, it's uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah, because sometimes I I feel like the real uh, pain, I guess, is felt by people on slow internet connections. Because for us, for for me right now, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. But if I were on three G, I'd be pretty. Yeah, if, probably if you disable like JavaScript, you can you can look at the at it as a MPA. But uh, oh, okay. yeah, so let's get started. How how familiar are you with PNPM? <laughs> PNPM, I started using it. Woohoo! Okay, so all right, yeah. so yeah, shall I? That's, uh, that's get just for you going? then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let me go to my little. Danny devs, and we'll just get a new folder. We'll call this aisle stuff. And I think you're doing it probably on the second monitor. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't want to show any like sensitive. Uh, oh, okay. That, that makes files. sense then. So, I use CMD or I really love CMD. Uh, I haven't used Windows for like a decade. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had like... a little chat about. Windows I don't know any of like a Windows uh, advancements uh, since then. <laughs> They're both bullies. Okay, so let's see here. Um, this is all. I think it's it's are. hard. So it was like PNPM and uh, PNPM something. Yeah. Yeah. Here Great. Don't hate me for copying and pasting. Uh, you forgot the P. That's the most important part. <laughs> Okay, let's go do that. Yeah, I'll so um, sure. right. Uh -huh. So as as for the options, uh, like the project name doesn't matter, so we can just press enter. So uh, here uh, we can try. I don't know, like solid. Okay. 
and on the next one, uh, we won't use testing, but yeah. we can just add it to see like the, the files that it creates. Okay. That's it. Yeah. npm install, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the actual provides instructions from NPO. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Some newbies are gonna be like NPO. Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, I wonder if someone had like had to update that because like people were getting For confused. Sure. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, that's okay. I don't think V plugin solid. Sorry. It was working on my computer just. <laughs> Alexa, sir. Um. Okay. I guess we can no ignore that <laughs> and ignore okay. her. So, uh, so, so, what's the what's the error? Is it like a just a? I've seen this before. It's like a unmet peer dependency. Um, I think it's a, it seems like a warning, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but it's not a fatal thing, I don't think. Okay. I guess it's solid is still using uh, V two point something, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, let's take a look at the folder structure. Um, Yeah, you can see MDX here. <laughs> yeah. Now let's go ahead. Oops. Run up the server. Uh oh. Let's look at the JSON. Is that did I do the right thing? NPM run dev, right? I think you did uh, on Windows Absolute Pass. What's happening? <laughs> Only URLs with a scheme in folder supported by the default ESM on Windows Absolute Paths must be valid. Uh, are you using some kind of like um, uh, uh, WSL or something like uh, Linux em emulation? No, no. Yeah, uh, that's that's probably it. You probably you probably should see something like that. Oh, there it's just not working with Windows, huh? Yeah, uh, that's that's the most stuff. Ah, <laughs> uh, that they didn't test it enough on Windows then, huh? Hmm. Uh -huh. I have WSL, but that's a whole. I never tried it myself. Hole. Also, yeah. So yeah, that's I, a whole. Lot, that's gonna take um five, 10 minutes to get myself uh, situated, but um, that's weird, huh? <laughs> we should file a bug report. <laughs> right. This becomes a how to contribute to open, open source. Yeah, sometimes in like in Windows, if you have like a space inside of the like a folders or something, it will like everything will stop working. But yeah, I don't, I don't know like apart, apart from that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's kind of not, that's, uh, I mean like, I could, where is it exactly? Right, so if you don't know how to, uh, I mean, we can try also like maybe like, uh, no. I was saying that maybe we, we oh. can we can try it like not installing solid or something, but I think yeah. we installed kind of like, it's it's probably like the, the V itself or something like that. It's, it's, it's yeah, um, actually, Yaroslav, I think there's like an extra thingy here, right? Forward slash. Right. I, I don't know how that should look in on Windows. So it's, it's <laughs> definitely shouldn't have three of them. <laughs> uh, I, I would I wouldn't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it says valid file colon two forward slashes. So hmm. Well, should I try it again without solid? I'm just I'm just quickly like looking at the at their documentation just to check if the okay. if they have like Windows support. So far, I found four issues that are like Windows is not working, mm. <laughs> and all of them are closed. So that means they fixed them, right? So that means that or it probably them. works in Windows sometimes. Okay. Well. Yeah, so let's let's try to create just another 
uh, another template. I, I was also wondering, so when you were uh, when you were creating like uh, this um, this thing with like next, maybe we can try it like different version. Oh, okay. I see. Where, yeah. Okay. So let's see. So instead of next, maybe we can uh, we can use some 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 other version. Which one do I use, by the way? Yeah, which which versions are they on? Mine is zero eight four. Zero eight four, okay. Oh Might as I well don't know if that's if that's good or not. <laughs> yeah, you right. forgot the dot. So zero dot eight dot four. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give that a shot. <laughs> no matching versions. Uh, oh, 0 0.8.2. Oh, yeah. So that's probably the version of files, but that's not the version of like uh, the thing that like create files. Yeah, I that see. makes sense. So, so, yeah, let's just try next again and just let's yeah. try to install we'll less stuff. It. Maybe that will help. If not, we will just try uh, like they have stack blitz. So we can just use that environment. <laughs> So we'll so say no. <laughs> no. We'll say no, uh -huh. just to be conservative. I think you forgot to do like CD. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, install. No, no one tests this stuff in Windows, so that's oh yeah, zero eight four. You have the same version, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I made it to the final round of the job uh, that I was talking about before, so they'll probably right. give me a Mac, you know, MacBook Pro. So I was probably off to the Windows side again. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, all of your problems are going to be solved with Mac. <laughs> Is is the new chip? Uh, is it all settled in, and all the little bugs are flying away? I, I, I use Mac like once every like five years, so this this time it's uh, <laughs> it's it's a bit better. Uh, I, 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 oh, yeah, yay. something about that. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so so this is a better software, so <laughs> stuff happens. Yeah. Okay, okay so, so we did it. Awesome. Right. Uh, let, let's look at the uh, the I think like about page, right? So like on on the bottom they have like a link on about. So this is this page is uh, is rendered with that um, that MDX file that we just looked at. So mm -hmm. it actually like I think it like a, a HMR works. So if you update your uh, markdown file, the page will automatically update. Mm-hmm. You probably don't think that it's a big deal, but when I started d doing like my first blog with Next.js, mm -hmm. it's not true. <laughs> if you change your markdown files, your page is not updated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, hot module, I think, yeah, ever since V came out, it's just been amazing. So let's check it out. Yeah. Hey, you need to go to about about page. Oh, okay, so if we didn't do, do anything. Oh no. I guess it's different than that template. I, I was <laughs> I was sure that about is MDX and this one is, is view. Oh, okay, so it's yeah, home is MDX about uh -huh. view. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I mean Does uh, that look like view? <laughs> This, yeah, yeah, just, uh, well, wait a second. <laughs> what is this page tag? Uh, so I guess that's like some metadata, right? Usually I, I see this as head, but okay, they, they did it as page. We got our template style. Yeah, just missing our script tag. And uh, index has some um, front matter. Then welcome. Okay, where's welcome? Right here. Whoa. 
Okay, so I think these are slots, right? Yeah, it's funny that like MDX started as like uh, G, uh, like React and <laughs> React stuff, but mm -hmm. you can use view components right in MDX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I mean, I know Markdown is fairly friendly with HTML, right? But yeah, when I learned that view components can be embedded in Markdown, I was like, that's cool. They must have engineered something, right? Yeah, th there is a difference between like Markdown and uh, MDX. And even like Markdown format itself, it has like many flavors, as they call it. So like mm -hmm. yeah, there's like a GitHub flavored Markdown and right, there's right. like a common Markdown, I think. Yeah, we used to support all that stuff. So <laughs> it, it wasn't mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, so um, I think, yeah, so... So I think like the layout is that thing that gets uh, used when you do like page in, yeah. in MDX file. So in in V, that's going to be like index HTML or something like that, right? Mm. That's yeah. just your like head, body, like met metadata and all that stuff. If you don't use server side rendering, I see what you're saying. Yeah, this is sort of normally it'd be an index HTML, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's funky. It's different for a little bit funky for me, but um, I'm curious. They don't really have to specify the layout, huh? Because in Vitesse, we use a little YAML thing at the bottom uh -huh. to specify the layout. Yeah, it's so similar in Astro. You have to, like, every, every page should have, mm -hmm. like, a layout specified. So that's very interesting that uh, this doesn't seem. I guess it. Okay, so I guess they just make it just happen with the default. Um, what else would I look at here? Yeah, it's very simple. Files TypeScript. Yeah. So the interesting file in terms of configuration is actually like. IELTS config or something like that. I see. Mm -hmm. So it's done in a similar uh, style as uh, Vite config is. And I think you can pass like Vite options uh, to it as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have like a separate Vite um, config file. I see. So so what I do if I were um, really going to use this is I would let's check the activity. <laughs> The joyful. Okay, so it's made by. Um, that's probably Italian. Yeah, Maximo Mussini. Let's give it a star. <laughs> and okay, so he's still working on it. Pretty. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, sh should I go back to the this page? Uh, I mean, you can kind of. Uh, do you have like a it? thing in mind that you wanna you wanna try? You wanna like uh, maybe like a feature like view, from ViewPress that you're like, oh, I wonder if there's a f the same feature here. Um, I think for me, I think I mentioned this yesterday, but um, I had been just doing a table of contents and everything in my own personal site just by hand, mm -hmm. and I learned about globs and using um it's a way to organize your blog content programmatically mm -hmm. uh, but that's not necessarily related to aisles um i guess we could make something it's real simple right so in terms of like astro or uh or like fresh or aisles uh it is kind of like expected for you when you work in your blog you just create like a, a post basically like route <laughs> mm -hmm. and there there is your document but then uh tools that do static site uh, how do they call it like static site generators so like uh jekyll or uh hugo or what was the other one like 11 d and all, all of those they would usually have like a some concept of like creating kind of like um um listing pages i guess I don't know like what's the proper terminology is, but 
like a page for every post with that tag or like page for every post like posted on that month and all of that right, stuff. Right. So tools like uh, Astro will not actually have something like that. You have to kind of do it yourself. And mm -hmm. uh, that's where that's where like having having like some kind of like uh, globes or like uh, a way of like listing all of the posts like from this director or something like that. That's where it kind of like plays out because that's the the something like Hugo. They will just uh, give you a way to kind of like hook into that system or like just change the template of that page that's already there. But mm -hmm. here, like everything has has to be <laughs> has to be created. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so Hugo comes with a with a system for handling managing your blogs. Yeah, that that's exactly why people kind of like uh, yeah. want to use it because exactly. it, use it. <laughs> it's it's more like it's more like WordPress. It's more like a content management yeah, system exactly. than yeah. just like gen generating websites because it's like it's easy to generate <laughs> websites yeah 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 that's true that i i, I guess i didn't mind doing it by hand because i knew at, at some point i would go out and research how to do it how to roll my own system yeah but um yeah uh this is really interesting because okay so uh, there is there is one thing that i want to i want to try mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh so if you go to uh, like terminal and instead of like running dev, uh, you can run build. So it will create, I think, like a dist folder, or I don't, I didn't remember what's the name of mm -hmm. the folders, but yeah. yeah. So this is uh, this is uh, like static website that you can put on like Netlify or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, <laughs> it's it's pretty similar to what you get from like any other framework, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the interesting part is like where to look at like JavaScript, how much JavaScript did it, uh, did it generate? So if you go to assets, There's none because <laughs> we have none. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I mean, essentially if we add a little button or whatever, then we can just kind of label it, right? Like tell aisles lazy loaded or loaded on visibility. I think that's what Astro does or just uh -huh. load it up immediately. Um, should yeah, and, and the thing is that if you if you do some if you try to do it in like in uh, something like Next or uh, like Next or Remix or something like that, mm -hmm. you will be sending the whole like React whole view like everything, and your whole app is going to be uh, like re-rendered on client side. So like in Remix, you can like go into your like template and like remove script tag so mm -hmm. that you like you're basically like telling remix no please don't send any javascript and it will it will like work like that so it will it will generate like um in terms of remix it's it's like it's always service side i think i don't remember if they added ssg or not but at least it will not have javascript everything will run on the server once it will send you like uh CSS, HTML, and like images, but mm -hmm. it, they will not send you JavaScript. And for here, Remix, you're talking huh? about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can you can Somewhere. tweak like all the other frameworks to do to do something like that, but it's like there's you need to basically like opt out, <laughs> and uh, in in uh, island architecture frameworks, you need to uh, opt in opt into in. into uh -huh. JavaScript or so, like. Oh no no no! We don't we don't use JavaScript here. It looks like you. It looks like React or something. No no no! We don't we don't really act. We don't really actually use it. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah, that's a good point that you make because uh, Vue is pretty light relative to React, I think. Um, but yeah, to, it's to only half, to half, half the size, I think. <laughs> yeah, only half. Yeah, so half is decent, but it's still yeah big compared to nothing. All HTML. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think Solid even has a, 
they ship a little bit. They ship their reactivity, some sort of uh, subscription system uh -huh. is shipped immediately, but it's very small. Right. So, so in terms of page, uh, like uh, just like bundle size of, of frameworks. So like Angular is, I think, like the biggest one. React is uh, like pretty big. Uh, Vue is probably like half half of React. And there are like a lot of frameworks that are kind of like Svelte level. So it's probably like half of the of the view again. Mm -hmm. And there are like few frameworks that work on really, really like slim bundles. Yeah. And that's yeah. like Preact, Solid, and maybe like uh, Mark or Quick, all, all of that stuff that, that those those will do maybe like 10% of what React is or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I was actually wanted to ask you a question because I was gonna install Phaser, which is a uh -huh. JavaScript framework, but it was like the download alone was like over sixty megabytes. Pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, so is it like a game engine or what, what yeah, does it do? A full on, pretty mature game engine, two uh -huh. D two D game engine, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure Vite will code split it, but. Um, yeah, I, I never got around to fully installing. I was installing it and it was taking forever, but um, only when people visit that page where Phaser is being used, yeah, will it will it start downloading that, right? Right. So yeah. so uh, the la lazy loading part is uh, is is done in a lot of frameworks. So mm -hmm. if you're doing, I don't know, like Nox or something like that. Uh, I haven't used VTest, so like I know that you're more familiar with that one, but like I don't, I don't have any like <laughs> any comparison to that. So what they do is they have, um, is they have uh, like lazy loading. So when you're working on your, I don't know, like dashboard, you make sure that only like pages that actually use this library will yeah. use it, and they import it through some kind of like. Uh, instead of like import something you you will call like dynamic import so like mm -hmm. uh and like in react it's like react.lazy in view i i assume there's like something similar to that so just, yeah and that makes sure that will basically like split your bundle into stuff that depends on this thing and the stuff that doesn't and then during your navigation when you're navigating on the page that requires this stuff you will download that bundle that this way, uh, and like, uh, and the file based routing kind of like frameworks, they will do all of this stuff usually automatically. So mm -hmm. if you're working on your like landing page and your dashboard, they will make sure that only like stuff that is used in, uh, on the on the main uh, like landing page will be used. But uh, we, we stopped the dev server. That's why it's not working. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, once you're navigating to dashboard, that's when you're like downloading all of the like stuff that's like not <laughs> yeah that's that's required on that page, but wasn't needed on that page, and the, the other way around. So it's yeah. like yeah, if you're using something like Vite or Create React App, you have to do like most of this stuff uh, manually. You have to manually. keep track of like routing and and like how it depends. That's interesting because yeah, I haven't done anything uh, in my setup my the test setup and I think it just does it automatically because I do have yeah, a yeah. lot of libraries like matter JS for, for game physics um, for my labs I just install packages and then play around with them so I have a lot of packages but yeah my light I just I'm not exactly don't know what's going on but my lighthouse scores are very high so uh, <laughs> I'm like right like it's doing it automatically <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be very high for like for the pages <laughs> that actually use all of this stuff uh -huh. Yeah, I guess uh, what happened here? A page, oops. Yeah, so it's not it's not working right now, right? Because the so JavaScript is I not. Think, <laughs> I think they actually have a bug. So when I when I was trying it on my computer uh, recently, uh, the like view in templates was running client side code if you don't don't compile it. So uh, <laughs> so let let's let's just see. So. Uh, so you added this button inside the uh, like template itself, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Um... Yeah. So it's yeah. it's complaining to you about script tag. Do you, do you know what's the what's the problem is? 
Oh, is it complaining? Where I mean, it? there's like squiggly line, so <laughs> I don't know if that's... Oh, the little... Okay, let's take a look at that. Um... Oh, yeah. The, it's it's just like enforcing TypeScript. <laughs> I'll enforce it and ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um... So here's the... Uh, here's the like first catch, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. is that uh, so uh, you have to you have to imagine that there is uh, like a template part and there is like app part. Okay. And the template can only run on the server. It can only generate HTML. Oh. So all the uh, JavaScript code that you will have in like Astro template or like in, in, in like here in template, mm -hmm. it will actually run on kind of like different uh, different level. So like in, in Astro, if you have script tag and you put like console log in it, it will just send that HTML of like of a script tag and uh, of like of a console log. Uh -huh. So it's not exactly like, uh, it's not exactly like uh, view setup function, right? It's it's uh -huh. it's just it's just sending it as HTML. So I wonder if you can hmm. check like the uh, the like source code of the page what is getting generated. So I wonder if if it just sent the script tag over over uh, over HTML. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, so if you go to elements and just like search for script something like that, it's probably con uh, like uh, Control F. Yeah. Yeah, so let's look at the like. This is like, uh, so there is going to be like few script tags for v, uh, for Vite and like, uh, like HMR and all that stuff. But okay, so that's that's uh, <laughs> that's looking that's like theirs, right? maybe one of ours. Okay, so it's do uh, it's it's uh, it's framework code for IELTS. So mm -hmm. let's 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 search for the next one. There's one more. Okay, and let, let's uh, look at that one. No, so it looks like it just like ignored yeah. everything that you wrote. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you remove a uh, setup uh, from that thing. Like I never tested that. Uh, like I tested that for for Astro, but I never tested that for IELTS. So yeah, I wonder how. So, so you you can probably leave the length, but okay. Let's 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 do just script. <laughs> okay. So actually, Vite, uh, these scripts are getting. Uh, transformed by Vite in some cases and not like 100% sure how that works. So uh, let's just, let's just like, uh... <laughs> okay, so, so it's, it's just six, six stacks. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like it, it, it changed. It. it changed, yeah. Yeah, two of them, so yeah. Nope. So, so because you have like an angle bracket on the end, there are like mm -hmm. some scripts that are doing like type oh, or something right, like that. Right. That's why you, yeah. you don't you, you don't find like that's every right. one of them. Yeah, that that seems like a framework code. Mm -hmm. Did you break it? I think it's like a blank blank screen right now. <laughs> I know, right? What happened? That's funny. Can you can you check like the uh, terminal just to see if uh, if I oh, know it's there? Oh, okay. okay. So <laughs> I think I deleted the media query. So it's freaking out. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's not responsive. Oh, there it is. OK. Yeah, so I guess a, a natural question I'd have is, OK, how do, I, how do I now enable it? Yes. So for that, you are going to use islands. So you can, you can keep your code for now, which just will move it to the other file. So the place to do that is like you have folder called components. Mm -hmm. And you just create a new um, a new file, uh, like dot view file. Oh, what does this component give me? Like a button? Um, yeah. I, I think you have to do it like the capital letter, but I'm not. I'm not sure if that's like a oh, convention yeah, yeah, yeah. or like yeah. required thing. That is a convention, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't uh, step on HTML's toes. Right. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So now this is like a. This is 
this is where we are in app territory and this is where you're in view like land it's not it's no longer a template it's no longer just running and on server and turning html into html this is this is like where you can where you can do all of the all of the stuff that you would usually do including script setup function <laughs> okay so how do i connect to the template though right so now uh I think it's using like view automatical like component discovery. So if you go to like components something DTS, it should add your button there. Yeah, I think this one, right? Yeah. 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 So so now you can just just use a button uh, component inside of your templates. Okay. So let me just make sure. So whenever they draw like those diagrams with islands. You're, yeah. you're, you're, we are doing this, uh, like rect, like color to rectangle right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The hydration, this, the JavaScript the code is flowing into, so you said I can just use it here now. Right. Um, so in your page, instead of this button, you do like capital. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it should like discover it. And yeah, yeah I mean, we can remove this script tag now. Okay. Oh yeah, remove this. Okay. So that's really funky. Yeah. That's interesting. And yeah, in fresh auto import. Yeah, yeah, it should should work. Yeah. Okay. So in fresh, what they do is they have like a separate folder that's called islands. So uh did it work? Um there is a there is a trick to console that. Log. So, so I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I, I was gonna do an alert, but yeah, it's just a console. Yeah, log. yeah, it's working. So, can you try oh, building cool. it again uh, in, into okay. HTML? There is there is a, a seems to be like a bug, or maybe that's how they uh, they did it. But um, like in Astro, your button wouldn't work, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to oh, explain no. why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Let's go to dist folder and let's look at the what what JavaScript got got included. It's a trick question. There is not. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So it translates JavaScript into 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 what? <laughs> and the answer is that it's it's the same kind of like opt in thing. Yeah. When you're using components. Those components don't have to be uh, uh, like application components. They could serve like both roles. They sometimes could be interactive. Sometimes they could be not. So if you have two pages in, you import the same component on one page, it could have JavaScript. On the other, it it it, it may be not. Okay. So it, it's it's a bit like too crazy, but it, there is like a method to this madness. If you go back now to your page, to your like template, uh, template of your page, you to in order to draw that uh, colored rectangle on this button, yeah, so line eight. Mm -hmm. on, on this button, you have to say client dot like load or something. Dot load. Oh, not dot, but the uh, uh, semicolon. Yeah. Right, so right. Just like this that. is this is how you are telling it. So now if you save it and build it again. Yeah, now it's going to show up. Magic. <laughs> Where are you? Ah. Now we have a bunch of JavaScript. It's bloated. And, right. So, so the idea is that. That's cool. If we don't have any client uh, directives in our website, Mm -hmm. The result is going to be like just straight up HTML. And if you only have JavaScript in one component on one page, and it's going it's going to generate JavaScript for just one one component one and one page. Right. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So the bug yeah. that I was describing is that like when you're working on dev, it ignores client directives and it's like everything is, is hydrated all the time. So it's like it's confusing that you it was working on your dev machine, but once you deploy it, it's not working. So that, that's that's the bug. Like in Astro in, in both that cases. Is a bug, you, right? Yeah, that's yeah. not a, 
That's yeah, in both cases, yeah. it will it will not be interactive until you add. And, and again, the idea is that you can use this button on the other page, and on that page is not going to be interactive. Uh, but on this one, because it has client uh, directive, mm -hmm. it will be. Right, right, right. And then they, I assume they have like client visible, client lazy or something. Right. So this, um, it, it, I think it works differently a bit, like all, all over the like different frameworks. Uh, um, I think how it works, it will in some of them. I, I I never tested that, so it's it's a bit like speculative. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I think in some of them it works like that. So it, like it will load your like view, for example, but it will not make this component interactive until like something happens. So it's mm -hmm. it's still kind of like it's fast to be interactive, uh, but. Yeah, if you're if you have like a long page and like on the bottom you have like a sign up for yeah. our newsletter or something like that. Can afford to wait for it. Yeah, that that button could be like not uh, <laughs> not hydrated mm -hmm. until user actually gets there. Right, right, right. Well, that's I mean, just um, I'm struck by how Isles is this Astro. It is a direct competition with Astro, but yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody's heard of Isles except for the view, <laughs> view, view community. Yeah, but they are open to using other frameworks, which is except React. Except React, which is so. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually joking that like when we were discussing, that they said like if if someone creates a merge uh, like a pull request, we will merge it, but it's like no one created it yet. So <laughs> yeah. Uh... Whereas Astro was yeah very quick to to say yeah I mean React and Astro have a very interesting dynamic because with Astro Astro ameliorates a lot of the bloat and what and slow performance of React, right? I mean, in my mind, uh, I don't I don't see like React view or or even like Preact as exceptionally different in terms of bloating I because. See. For your like actually bloated pages, you will have maybe I don't know like half of megabyte of JavaScript code, mm -hmm. like your own code, mm -hmm. and those thirty or like seventy kilobytes of frameworks are not going to be like uh, doing any any difference. I it see. makes a lot of difference when you're working on like this content heavy websites. That's that where the difference is like zero kilobytes or like five kilobytes. That's like that's that's a difference for I a see. big app you have like 50 uh, like that 500 kilobytes or like 530 that's not going to uh to matter at, at that scale yeah. that that, <laughs> that that's why it's a it's a bit like uh yeah we know that react is, is fat but it's like it's <laughs> it's it's it's, 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 uh, yeah. it's done for its own use case where it, where it doesn't matter that's mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the way how i look at it <laughs> Yeah, for the for the the job I'm applying to, I, I I analyzed their legacy code. It's pretty old stuff. It was from mm -hmm. some stuff from when Flash died, and they had parsed it into HTML5. And um, they were using jQuery, and yeah, it was so weird because I looked at I I tried. I'm not really good at the dev tools yet, but I know that look at the network, and I can see what's being the waterfall. Yeah, and um, jQuery uh, was 600 KB. And uh -huh. for some reason, they downloaded it twice. So, <laughs> different, so is I, it a different version or, or just twice the same file? It was the same version. Exactly. Okay, that's version. interesting. Yeah. yeah, right? So I was like, oh, I think that you get that there's something wrong here. You could literally shave off 600 KB by yeah, yeah. importing it twice. So. Yeah, actually... But, yeah. I, I like for for a joke. I added uh, as uh, Astro integration for jQuery, uh -huh. so you can use a jQuery as a like as a framework. Oh, man. You can use like That's you brutal. can use like React View or jQuery, oh. and the, huh? Oh no! Go ahead and finish your yeah. thought. I was, I was so surprised to see that jQuery is like twice the size of React. <laughs> Yeah, even yeah. like minified and like GZ and all that. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and this one legacy one also had older versions that they had to also still download because <laughs> yeah. parts of it were still using older jQuery. So it was spaghetti code for sure. Yeah, it was a funky architecture. But um, I did notice that Svelte's 
so astro and state management are not really that great i heard but um svelte state management works out of the box apparently solids also works right out of the box with Vue and um, React, or yeah, React, they would have to do some sort of engineering to bring that to allow Pinia from Vue as the state manager for Vue. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Solid just works right out the box with state management in Astro and Svelte. So um, right. So I, I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about because it's. Uh, um, uh, I, I was going to somewhere with this like uh, <laughs> with this like uh, island architecture uh, mm -hmm. idea. Is that uh, uh, right? So so the the thing that uh, we were looking at like at uh, uh, at Isles website is that mm -hmm. you said oh like all the navigations are like super super fast and there is only. Oh, yeah. And the only way to do that is to have like JavaScript in charge of your navigation. Mm -hmm. And the problem there is that, okay, so if we're working on island architecture and we have like a, this, I don't know, like a button and this button could show like a form that's like for like email sign up or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that makes kind of like perfect sense. And that's actually where you would like go into like um, maybe like vanilla JavaScript or like smaller frameworks. There's like Alpine or whatever the, the like the the frameworks that just do show height or, or something mm -hmm. like that, right? right and like right. maybe like form for validation few lists. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's that's where all the like all the sizes matter, and uh, it actually like makes sense for you to have on the same website to have like different uh, like. Uh, frameworks because like mm -hmm. okay but on this page we use we only use preact for example but all like right. once we're navigating to this page that's like a whole page that's like has some kind of like dashboard and all that stuff that's where we have our like react uh libraries that's where we like drawing charts or like doing i don't know like all the like dashboard yeah. stuff like Re yeah, react yeah. Twitter or something like that that's like yeah, yeah. more oriented highly, for that yeah yeah mm -hmm. highly dynamic uh -huh. yeah and like for that page, it doesn't make sense to use React, and that, that's why like support of multiple frameworks actually like makes sense, and mm -hmm. it, it makes sense because once you're clicking on dashboard link, you destroyed everything that you had on your like email sign up uh, page, and once you're on a dashboard and you go back to to uh, like front page or something, you destroy everything that you had for a dashboard, and the, the tricky question becomes. Like, how do I not destroy stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the most obvious one, so like the um, uh, uh, Fireship IO, uh, like YouTube, he, he said, okay, I have my website, but there is like an icon of like uh, p people who sign in, and this icon should be there like uh, right. all the time, even though it's people are like, like navigating. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so yeah. persistent state somewhere. Right, yeah. right. And it, yeah. it should be persistent in terms of like your JavaScript. So if you're like created an object, that object is preserved. You can like store it to local storage, but it's not, not the same. <laughs> you mm -hmm, have to like mm -hmm. uh, destroy it and create a new one, destroy yeah. it and create a new one. But if you create like window dot something and it like, will that object exist or will I go to new window where yeah, it did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, from my limited understanding, um, ja Svelte compiles all the way down to JavaScript, right? Including okay. its writable stores, its store, its state management. So I'm not sure where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, I know, me neither. Um, so what I'm saying is that let's say you have a Svelte component in Isles, right? Or Astro and uh -huh. another page, you know, split around. So behind the scenes, even though uh, you navigate away from it and the component is unmounted, right? I guess. Right. Um, there's still Svelte <laughs> in the background, you know, in right. vanilla so that, JavaScript just managing your state for you. Yes, that's that's exactly the question of like, mm -hmm. how do I preserve something on the screen? How do I preserve something like in a memory? How yeah. do I like uh, if I have multiple components? How do they can kind of like talk to each other because yeah. it's like you can't pass like a 
prop or something because it, like this thing is here, this thing is here. And if on the top you just have a template, HTML template, there is no like context object that you can use or something like that. Yeah. So you, there, there has to be like some higher level thing that, uh, and, and then the question is like, where do you, where do you draw this line? And all of the like all of the talk about like MPAs and SPAs is like so we are an SPA side, we decided that we don't trust browser with all of its bug but back buttons and all that stuff. We will mm. just do everything ourselves. Like yeah. you, we just like create the whole world and then like if user navigates somewhere, we will just like we we know what to do. We have yeah. like a new page Prevent in memory, before. old page in memory. <laughs> we do like we don't differ and all of that stuff. <laughs> I see. I see. And the a MPA people are like, no, 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 this is like, this is like completely like too much work. Let's mm -hmm. just create the whole page. And once you need a new page, like you, you create a new one. But there is like a always kind of like middle ground between all yeah. of this. I think like Rich Harris called it like a transitional, transitional apps. apps. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember that talk. He tried to, he's like, hashtag transitional apps. And I was like, I can't think of a better name, can you guys? But We'll use it, <laughs> and then it didn't blow up. <laughs> yeah, but, and the, yeah, it is happening. Yeah, it's trend. The, they're meeting in the middle. Yeah, and and they're meeting from different directions. That's 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 what's happening. Is like Next.js is SPA app that just had or Knox or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's SPA app that that is in charge of your whole browser experience, yeah. but. It runs on the server once before you're like opening the page, right. and you can set it up so it's just like returns empty, empty uh, HTML, yeah, and then yeah. just hydrates everything like in JavaScript. Yeah. So that's that's the kind of like one direction, and the other direction is like no, we we create the whole page, but when you click on a button, we don't want to do navigate like full navigation. Maybe if you're like on a GitHub, right? And you're clicking between like commits, uh, files, and I forgot like checks or something like that. They have like four four tabs. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Like yeah, full yeah. pull requests. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, why do we need like full page navigation right. if we can if we can just like re-render that part of it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you would create this kind of like this whole thing. You will create it as like a, as a JavaScript application, uh -huh. and you will handle kind of like on click events inside of this thing. Mm -hmm. And you will go and like uh, ask for like list of commits, and you will render commits. You will ask mm -hmm. for like list of files, and you will add render list of files. Yeah. Uh, in in terms of like how um, how GitHub actually does it, they use uh, Turbo Links, I think it's called, and okay. it actually yeah. doesn't do much on JavaScript. It will just ask for HTML on the server. Mm. And it will just do like inner HTML. So if you had like some state, it will be it will be kind of like destroyed and lost. But the, you, you can see like how how it's like yeah. coming from the like different different yeah, angles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I know the MPA templating engine game is is getting better. I know there's you know how the spa is instant navigation without reloading. I think there's a I heard I just heard of an MPA like software. I forget which language it uses, but it, it does that on but on the MPA side. So right. And there are like different ways. So cool. the, yeah. the one that they described and like the one that you can do in like Astro or Fresh is you can you can create mm -hmm. like your GitHub like pull request kind of like island. And yeah. there you can you can like manage all of the all of the state. And you don't do full page navigation, but you require JavaScript to, for in order to like for this thing to work. Yeah. And uh, now you're saying, okay, but what if I, what if I go? Uh, I want to go to my settings. Mm -hmm. I'm not on the exactly the same page. I'm just like switching between tabs. <laughs> I want to go to like completely different page. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where it becomes interesting, and the answer is like. As like the more stuff that you wanna you wanna switch on the like on the on the browser, mm -hmm. the higher your kind of like the, the bigger your uh, island becomes. If that mm -hmm. makes like sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, from what I can tell, uh, the Astro folks are definitely saying up front, this is better for uh, mostly static 
stuff. Um, you can push the bounds and you can even do simple e -com simpler e-commerce apps with this. But uh, And I think their point is, or Fred Schott's point is like, not most of the web is actually not that dynamic. Yeah. 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 yeah right. So they're like, why aren't we addressing this market? Why are we turning right away to these bloated frameworks to do stuff when it's too complex and it's not necessary and it's slower. Yeah, I mean, there's like a pendulum like uh, swinging and like yeah. everyone is like, oh, we need to do everything like this way. No, we need to do everything like this <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. It's like, so when everything became a single page app, like for example, our like uh, uh, landing page is single page app. Yeah. And it's a bit like, it's a bit silly. It's like for for Google, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. has to go to like uh, and like uh, run up like Chrome to render it and all that stuff. It's like this page, uh, it's like it's it doesn't benefit. Uh, like the user doesn't benefit from us using React. We mm -hmm. do. Like we as the developers, we don't want to have different pages in different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, the like proper solution. Uh, like when React was just starting, was just to create new like landing.html and you would just like write it as an HTML. And when people are coming to your landing page, you just serve this file instead of like uh, instead of like uh, starting React. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, right. Yeah, th th that worked at the time, but like no one wants to write those HTML files. <laughs> oh, huh. yeah, that's interesting. And and like and that's how everything became, uh, everything became written in React. But like then someone came and like, but we need to generate HTML. We need like for this page to have like this title, or for this page to have like this content for like SEO purposes, or for this page to have like a, a like a social media like a image and all that stuff. And they're like. We can probably render like React to string. It's 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 going to be like slow and like a like a, a. I didn't know that. Huh? I didn't know that all this thing the the last five minutes that you've been talking about. I I wasn't aware that. Yeah, there is like a bit of history, yeah. like how it mm -hmm. how it kind of happened. I, I'm like simplifying stuff, but that's 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 like the the evolution. And mm -hmm. before we actually had like render to string in React. What we would do is we would run browsers ourselves mm -hmm. and just like save it as, as a file and like HTML file and like a server will would send you HTML oh, file hilarious. that we kind of like pre-rendered. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, like on I, I think you still have like a checkbox that is like, do you want to pre-render your <laughs> web pages? And it will wow. do that like for That's you. Funny. It will go to like to Chrome and like yeah. uh, create a like static uh, HTML file. Yeah. I mean, it, again, that legacy code base that I was working with, I was so struck by it because they literally like did all their HTML dynamically using da JSON data files and then like JavaScript. And I was like, you just created the entire like interactive simulation with JavaScript. And I was like, don't you think we could move a little bit more where, you know, we can see a little bit more of the structure of the project with, I guess, HTML, right? But um. Yeah, they, 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 everything was, it's like a mental thought exercise that you have to do in your head. You're like, oh, okay, this, it's tough. So I, I, especially if you're an artist and you're like, okay, can I see the project? And you're like, oh shoot, it's all in JavaScript. <laughs> like you, there's no way you can do this. Let me just give me the asset and I'll do it for you. So. Yeah. So, so, and that's, that's how like all, all of these things were like happening. And like on the, uh, on the like traditional web websites, so, like, MPA as a term kind of like happened after SPA, SPA became a thing. Before mm -hmm. that, that was just a website. <laughs> no one called yeah. it an MPA because like the, like every website was MPA. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, and uh, on that on that side, they those people wanted like more and more reactivity and like more and more like interactions on all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. They were they were they were good at rendering HTML templates fast, but those HTML templates should have been like doing something after like the browser is loaded. So like, mm, I don't know if, if, if <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know if you remember it, but like the, in the olden times, when you open the page, it will open up and will show some kind of like curly braces and all the like some kind of like template like 
like local language like uh like i don't know like something like uh title underscore english as like a, literally you will see it on the screen and then like javascript will kick in and you Ooh. will see that like the proper proper title a flash of something not that really yeah, not, yeah. so not the, the thing was that like the javascript app was completely detached from a uh, server side mm -hmm. rendering so a server would render like html really fast but they didn't know like for example what language you were using so they had to do some kind of like template string that would be replaced on javascript and i see yeah I and see. that's wow. kind of like kind of like angular <laughs> i think mm -hmm. as, as far as i remember kind of like how it came up it, it was it it looked as html template that you would generate on the server and if mm -hmm. you want to like uh, so they still do that. So like if you go to uh, something like Ruby on Rails, they have their own kind of like um, framework. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you, you're you generating all the like state and interactions on the server. Mm -hmm. And then just like JavaScript frameworks kind of like make sense of what you wrote in, 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 in Ruby. Yeah. So yeah. You, you show like something like you have like, um, I don't know, like data attribute basically like show this on hover or something like that. And JavaScript just knows, and like a bootstrap, I think, like bootstrap JavaScript, like uh, uh, part of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> it still it still knows how to like show a dialogue. So you render like the whole model or something like that on the server, but then JavaScript knows that you only need to show this part, but when the user clicks, you show the, like the rest of it and all that stuff. And I think mm -hmm. that, there are like multiple things of that, but like I remember like Bootstrap doing that, and I think now it's like Daisy UI or something like that is doing that. Right. So there is like a there is like a different language of like how you would communicate from the server which parts are like interactive, yeah. and you can't do like the whole SPA experience like that because you will send like I don't know like two megabytes of HTML mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. just in case if someone clicks like. If you open like a landing page, but someone wants to go to a profile, you need to send profile uh, like template, uh -huh. <laughs> and your JavaScript library should know that if you click on this, it show it show shows like this template and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And this actually like how we <laughs> used to we used to write it on mm -hmm. like from the like MP MPA uh, side of things, and that's why everything is kind of like clashing as like okay, but what if the language that we talk like between all of this stuff is JavaScript, <laughs> but we mm -hmm. just run this JavaScript on the server, we run just, just, just JavaScript on the client. And that's where we are at right now. So like yeah. you saw that like this template that you that you wrote, just because of like, just because we added like client uh, uh, direct directive to it, yeah. it became like out of, of the template, it became like an a, a, like a app component. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Now I have a question for you about state again. Like, um, do sure. you do you think that server? So MPAs t tended to keep state in a in in a in a database, right? Is that generally? That that's that's a really that's a really interesting question. Is like, what's the what's the role of the state? Because state basically, like, there are two states. So one state is kind of like server state is like, I don't know how many yeah. users we have. Yeah. <laughs> like list of your friends on Facebook or something like that. Right, right. And there is a right. like- a, you have in your bank account, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. there is a state of like, I'm opening up this model. It's like- Right, which is more on the client side. Right, so it's like server doesn't store in a database if you open the model or not. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's not storing like the uh or maybe it is I, I was i was going to say like it doesn't store what you have like typed in the field but like gmail does when you type something in, in like in a, for email it yeah. stores your draft right 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 and then so what, what is, the, what what is the state is like <laughs> is the is the draft that's stored to the server is the state or the or the like the text that you're typing right now is the state <laughs> right 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 yeah well, I guess I, I guess I would say it depends on the time and depends on because yeah, like you said, a draft needs to be re retrievable at any point in the future. So uh, maybe categories it more roughly as state on the server. <laughs> so there's state on the server you could have um, or in a database, and then there's the client side um, state and 
they can constantly inter, inter, interact, right? That's yeah. not a problem. Okay, so yeah, it, this is like a this is like a huge issue actually. Like uh, mm -hmm. I watched like recently, um, uh, quick uh, like t uh, team did did a video about like. No, we actually don't want to go to server for that. We want to create like a server uh, server worker that will like keep our cache, but like then it will later like uh, right, right. <laughs> invalidate that cache and all of that stuff. So it's like uh -huh. it, it is like a like I don't know like state and caching and all of that stuff. It's it's always kind of like a complicated problem mm -hmm. that you <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to figure out. And uh, yeah, so it's. Uh, I guess uh, we, we can probably try yeah. to, to try to build something like a a, a, a bit uh, stateful, and uh, yeah. we, we can we can we can talk through that. Do, do you want to try to do something like that? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's see. So, how about um, you can tell me what you're envisioning, and I'll try to implement it. Right. So, uh, it could be something as simple as I don't know, like mobile. Uh, like a uh, menu where you click on it and it like shows your, <laughs> you know, like how on the mobile you usually have like a, a like a three lines or something like that instead oh, of like the whole menu. Thing. Yeah, yeah, hamburger, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to, let's do it on the, I guess. Maybe About. it's a layout. It's like a header stuff. Yeah, so wrapper is the thing that turns it into like two columns, which <laughs> I find really confusing. Yeah, it is confusing. <laughs> Let's kill or it. not. So maybe it's just for navigation. Yeah, their their layout is like too, too complicated to understand what is happening. Yeah, uh, it will take, it'll take a little while to to dissect and it's funny because it applies it automatically yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i can't like disable it that's funny okay well i guess i can just throw it in here oh you said go to the layout and we can go up here and um get a hamburger icon right so so um let, let me pause it for a second. Sure. So now we're working on template part. So it can't be interactive. Oh, right. So we need to create like oh, a header component, component, component first. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So let's just call this like a nav. Uh huh. R. Okay. Copy. Right. So, yeah, it's not page anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it will have like a. It basically it will have a button, but instead of like a console log, it will change like a state from like toggled or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Is open or something. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I could grab a SVG real quick. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be pretty, but <laughs> yeah, the hamburgers are probably pretty popular options. <laughs> Make a real hamburger. Okay, how about let's just pick this one. That's a cool website. I never tried that. Yeah, Anthony Fu wrote that. Oh. So, so let's just do that, I guess. Uh huh. Turn it into an anchor. And um, so on click, I guess we'll do something like V. Sorry, my view is a little rusty, so we'll say. Mine is worse, so you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do, I'm I'm going to believe it. Okay, I'm gonna put a, a div around it. When in doubt, throw it in a div. <laughs> That's usually how it works, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll say like VF 
the uh, a little boolean flag um open open okay and then i jump up here and i'll just Um, we'll set it I knew that one. I was like, is it ref? Is it ref? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm not used to importing ref from view. That sucks. Uh, I don't know if that's like just a uh, uh, TypeScript thing or is it, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know what's the, what's the right answer here, so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is so cool. It shows you how big view is. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So um, we'll say just open that value equal to value. Mm -hmm. Should do a trick and we'll just minimize this guy. And oh, okay, I can do this. That's right. We'll grab. Um, else uh what are we looking for like anything right uh, it could be just a text or text. like i don't know like home and about or something it, it... How about oh something like i it? see you're you're looking for like and i was i was thinking about links already <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay let's see if that's working we're getting into the Right, so we were going to put it in layout, yeah. Okay. It is cool that they have this, and then we say client, yeah, load, right? Right. So, so the the, the idea is that, uh, for, in my mind, there are basically like three options that you should care about: is like client load, uh, client uh, idle, and client uh, visible. So, right. for the stuff that is like not on your screen at first, which kind of like footer and, and mm -hmm. <laughs> not like navigation because navigation is going to be like there right away. Right. You, could, you could use visible, mm -hmm. but for, and then it depends on like how soon you think like interaction is going to happen. Like load will load it a bit faster. So mm -hmm. you can, if you have like multiple components, you maybe like decide, okay, we need to load this one before the other one. And the idle is just like, it, it's it will wait for a uh, browser to kind of like to <laughs> to be done with rendering everything else so it depending on like basically where on the screen it is i would say it's like load idle and visible <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's i'm not, not an expert so this is just like my feeling on this so <laughs> it's nice yeah that there's only three <laughs> I mean, there are like uh, other ones, but you will know when you need those. Those, okay. those, those ones are like pretty obvious. If, if you <laughs> now, I if just want to make this color like white. But... I think I can just. Right. I, I, I'm. I'm not like entirely sure how that works. Oh yeah, and the, because of the their uh, their CSS, your your thing is under. I think you need to like remove flags or something like that. That oh that, there it is. <laughs> oh yeah, it's working. <laughs> yeah, and and it's white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> one of them's white. Another so can you, can you just like inspect element to just see what what KSS is like putting it there? Yeah. I think I think there's. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of like default <laughs> default template. Oh yeah, on a mobile view, it's 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 not using flex. I guess we we can keep it narrow, mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> just so it doesn't look as bad. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't even see it. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Um, right. So, so we can see some JS. Right. So now, question is like, okay, uh, if I click on this button, I want to see some like links or something, right? And the question is like, okay. So where is okay. this state is kind of, yeah. So let's add like one V if and kind of like with, with just text or like home and about or something like that. So it, when you click on the, when you click on the menu, it shows kind of shows the links. Okay. So this is the, 
open one. Okay, so we should put something. Yeah, it could could be there. Yeah, just just like uh, put uh, I don't know like two divs. One is like uh, one is um, home, and one is about something like that. Okay. And then you said. Yeah, it should be like it's only visible. Yeah, when we click on it, something like that. Okay, let's mm -hmm. give that a shot. It's ugly, but. I mean, yeah, it's probably like should be uh, the uh, different order. So like <laughs> links probably should be it. I mean, it depends on the de design, but. Let's do this. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, we could flex it over here, but um... no, no, no. let's let's not like I'm not a CSS developer, so mm -hmm. that's why I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. It says I'll root. Yeah, so it's using uh like web components, I think, uh, and th that's why it's uh, it's named like that. I so like native components are lowercase one word. Web components, lowercase, like words with dashes, and mm -hmm. uh, like uh, framework components are like capital, <laughs> capital letters. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, so now, cool. so now the question is like, uh, where this state lives? So imagine I'm on a, like on a home page and I click on about. Should I be navigated? On about page and my menu should close because I'm like I've destroyed the state and and like opened new page or right. should that be uh, preserved? So like if, if you write a uh, like next or next app, the default uh, behavior would be that the menu will stay there, but it's just like the content under underneath is going to change. But mm -hmm. if you're on MPA because like the state is going to be destroyed. You will like it. It will be kind of like closed automatically. But if you click on the bug button, it will be like open because on that page you have it open. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I think that's that's that is probably one of the biggest areas of what devs will have to grapple with when they use Astro or Isles. Yeah. Although since Isles is with Vue, I, I assume that they're going to build in some way to tap into state management real easily. So that you don't have to. Like... Right. So, so, so in terms of state management, like how much did you manage your state right now? Like, it, it was exactly as you would do it the the other way, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't like complicated in that case. But yeah. what if you have um, component communication? Yeah, yeah. What if you have like two, uh, basically like two nav bars, and right. the, once you click on one, like both of them should open. Kind yeah. Of like or. The, uh -huh. yeah. Or like you said, like uh, is the user logged in? Then show. Yeah. yeah. So it's like we have two components that share state, and it's like okay, in order for them to share state, we're like where the, where is this state should be stored, and it could be like in terms of like three, right? It should be like is it is it here or <laughs> or like lower than the three or or something like that. But uh, the the other question is like. Where is it stored over time when I'm navigating? Like, should I lose my state or mm -hmm. should I get back to my state when I press back, back button and all of that stuff? So it's like, it's, it's, it's really like this question has so many answers. <laughs> and for something like Astro, they are working on uh, tools that allow you to have. Uh, uh, that allow you to have this like turbo links or yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the one I was thinking I had just heard about yeah Tur turbo is enable spa like navigation right so that's that's from that side where the like rails live so I think turbo ra uh, turbo links is like uh, coming from rails yeah, that's, that's where that's where like no 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 we do everything on the in, like in Ruby we, we we just send HTML from mm -hmm. the server. But we have like a small library that kind of like understands what to do with this HTML and how to kind of like that's pretty smart. Yeah, put it, put it together. Evolution. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. actually it took them that this long. I, what, I what, think, what took so this long? Uh, actually, I don't know how old Turbo is, but I would. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really old. That's that's oh, okay. the thing. It's like 
it's uh, before <laughs> before React even existed, this wow. sort of stuff, like maybe not exactly like Turbo, but this sort of approach was 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 there, was working. <laughs> Interesting. So maybe just the hype train just went nuts for spas. So yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. a lot of people are so upset. They're like, HTML first, and like the JavaScript industrial complex is like <laughs> running the show. Yeah, so, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, like you said, if it comes from both directions, the MPA, well, first, one of the first things they'd say, well, how do we enable spa like navigation? Because that's something that people really seem to like. Yeah. So, okay. It's just that people haven't heard of it or it just hasn't been hyped. Right. Yeah. So in, in terms of like team behind Astro, they're pretty kind of like cold to the idea of doing something like that, but oh. they had like few experiments. So uh, for example, like even Astro, uh, like HMR, it actually works a lot of like multi-page navigation that is running inside of like a spa. So they, they will go get like new data from the server. They will diff it kind of like in, in like in React or like VDOM. They, they will like compare it and only change the like the, the important stuff. And mm -hmm. they have like few experiments. So I was playing with like, um, I think it's called like Astro Spa, like the, the NPM package. So that one, if you create, a, if you're reusing your layouts and in a phone on layout, you have like a video player that video player will be preserved between your navigations. So if you had this like nav bar that we just wrote, mm -hmm. you will actually like click through the links and it will be preserved as it, as it was in Next. Mm -hmm. So they have like few experiments on that. And uh, like we saw that IELTS um, website is like was pretty quick on navigations. Yeah. So I'm sure they're using something like that for their own website. Yeah. And this is where kind of like the threat is because like what if i what if i do multi page apps that are really fast they only download like just bits of javascript that you need but they also provide you like with spa style navigation and that's mm -hmm. like that's that's the threat <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool you know i uh, on a little bit of a tangent i i have my doubts about aisles living too long because it says here I started working on Isles because I wanted Vite Press plus Astro using Vite instead of Snowpack. Well, uh, Astro Snowpack is Snowpack was Vite. like years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Astro is the one with massive just acceleration of of popularity. So, yeah, I, I should like... have mentioned that like uh, earlier. I, I I just like I just forgot. But mm -hmm. actually, Astro has like uh, oh sorry, Isles has features that Astro doesn't. And, true. and for example, like HMR, like hot module reloading, it works way, way, way better than like Astro or Remix or something like that, that they're like Ooh. that are focused more on like content. This is focused okay. more on like SPA. So it's like it's IELTS is like uniquely kind of like interesting project because it's like no, no, no. We only like this part from Astro. It's like we, we want to write <laughs> like SPA kind of app. But we yeah. want to use islands, so it's it, it's it, it's really uh, you can like create like a real uh, kind of like SPA style apps with isles compared to mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to Astro. Well, it's such a gentle learning curve for both isles and Astro. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've looked at VPress, but uh, okay, so they use isles for dog fooding, but VPress. Yeah, but that one is very heavily for um, what you call it uh, documentation sites. Mm -hmm. So, but people use it for blogs and stuff. But I would now looking at this, Isles is probably better for for blogs. I I would say it's like um, there is like no universal solution right now, and the problem with universal solutions is they're like they're bad at <laughs> at everything, mm -hmm. and. So, so right now we have kind of like this discrete like solutions. Oh, you can use like Astro or you can use like uh, IELTS or stuff like, or you can do Next. But at some point, uh, uh, at some point they will probably like start to share like more and more features between all of them. And it's mm -hmm. going to be, okay, this is more, uh, this is more, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you will be more uh, like, for docs aside, maybe you should use this one. For something else, maybe you should use that one. So it's it, it, 
we're at a so early stage and that's actually like the, the thing that i wanted to talk about you uh, with you is like okay should like should someone who is just starting a like or who's like a junior developer like even care about something like that the problem is like if you're a senior developer and you like astro you can just say that we're using astro and you will use astro mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're a junior developer and you say i want to use astro there's like okay uh, what, what's what's that going to do like you, you don't have like kind of like power to do something like that <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, like and, and and the question is like sh should you care because because problem with uh with like someone who is just starting um it, uh, they don't usually have like uh enough weight of like uh, like you were describing okay they have like this huge app that is like jQuery and all of that like stuff but mm -hmm. if you if you say something like oh I want to like rewrite everything to interview they are not going to listen to you like as much. <laughs> yeah. Or if you are lucky, they will say, okay, if you want to use that, try try it yourself. And then maybe there is like a problem that you kind of like can't solve because it's just like <laughs> it's kind of like too too high of like a level of problem. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a very powerful question for junior devs because it ma it matters a lot how how their learning is gonna pan out by the approach they take. I mean, for me, my big breakthrough came when, okay, so Vitesse template is by Anthony Fu, who's an amazing Vue developer. He did yeah. Vue use the icons thing, slide dev, uh, which is uh, PowerPoint or slides for devs. Uh -huh. I haven't looked at that yet, but I heard it's pretty awesome. So he's like amazing. But I looked at uh, Vitesse and I was like, whoa, what are all these things? I, didn't, I wasn't real good with Markdown. So a lot of the plugins intimidated me. He uses Uno CSS instead of Tailwind CSS. Uh -huh. um, so I, I actually started with a vanilla view and I began adding a Tailwind and I began adding uh, different little plugins. And the more I worked in it, the more I was like, oh, I want this Vitesse plugin. <laughs> oh, I want this Vitesse plugin. Until so I had almost created like a Vitesse light of my own. So I was like, okay, now I'm ready to use Vitesse. And then I was like, it's like driving, you know, getting into a sports car and just like, zooming around wherever you want and i was like whoa this is awesome and it's fast my lighthouse scores are good why wouldn't i make every site like this you know i'm comfortable with it it's it's performance is not bad etc so i might recommend that route for people who are interested in 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 view um or maybe that would apply to react too so but create react app sucks so don't use create react go straight to next js right is that right so, so there is like a golden path or like a, basically like a, what what it, what everyone is using what you can get like the most help about or like yeah. most stack overflow questions all all of that stuff and that's hopefully that's the same stuff that is going like to get uh, is getting used somewhere like at work yeah. so you're you're getting um i think like the, the funniest criticism i remember like uh uh however like eight years ago when react was starting like facebook developers were so upset that facebook is migrating to react mm -hmm. because they're like i'm getting uh i'm getting like pr proprietary experience on this tool that no one is using i'm i will never find a job that is using react because react is just a facebook oh, tool so it's like funny. it's funny now how how like <laughs> things changed Obviously. but you, you get the idea of like okay if i go to work to google and they make me use angular this is like not marketable skill that it's That's like right. if i if i say like i have like five years of experience in angular and they're like who cares no one uses angular why why, why right. would <laughs> yeah that's the whole reason why people have a some people have a um, hostility towards the framework wars but yeah i mean speaking from Vue, uh it and now seeing astro and isles i might actually instead of doing a vanilla view i would encourage somebody to also learn concurrently or or, or in a similar time astro plus um view or uh aisles plus view because it's so close to the foundations of html css and javascript and then you can gently and, and in your mental model as a as a beginner it kind of almost helps to see these things isolated in islands and um 
Yeah, and it, it, it's so. interesting that you you you, you said uh, you said about like HTML fundamentals. The yeah. the like the most uh, I don't know like funny for me at least part is that Astro actually support dot HTML files. Mm -hmm. So if you have your old like website that is like written in uh, I don't know like uh, just like Notepad and you just like wrote the whole yeah, website yeah. in HTML, yeah. you can save that HTML or even if you go to like your like published website, you can just like save the, that published HTML. You can save it as a, in, a, in a, like in your uh, routes, like in Astro, and Astro will serve that file. So it's like is as close as to, as a, to HTML as possible because there is like no other, <laughs> there is no closer way. It's like you can run HTML files in Astro. Or you could just cut it and slap it in. Right, a... and exactly. Like once you have it, you're like, okay, so this is layout. I can put like this into yeah. like a component. This is like this thing, and I uh, this was written in like I don't know like jQuery. I wanna I wanna try like view for yeah. this interactive thing, and now mm -hmm. finally I fix like this focus bug or something like yeah. that. It was like there on my website for oh, ten fuck. years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and th this is this is like uh, th this is what's funny for me because like when we were starting develop uh, develop uh, like um, at my time when someone would start learning development, yeah. they would learn like HTML and CSS and maybe JavaScript as a way to connect to your like PHP uh, like uh, APIs. Uh -huh. That's so cool. you will update uh, just like a tiny bit and you will probably use some kind of like jQuery plugin that, that does actual updating. So you don't really use jQuery or like JavaScript. Uh, give me one second. I'll be right. I mean, uh, a little busy right now. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to have to run soon as well. So okay. <laughs> so I, I think that's that's our like last topic that we're, we're going to cover. But right. everyone was using, uh, everyone was learning like HTML and CSS. And JavaScript was like kind of like author afterthought, yeah. and you were just hoping that your backend has like all the like libraries that are doing it uh, itself, or like you're just using like uh, Bootstrap or something like that, where you just like created like a special class, or Bootstrap or jQuery. Boot Bootstrap is like based on jQuery, so it's, it's kind of like almost the same yeah, thing in my mind. Right, so it's right. like jQuery UI or like Bootstrap, where you just put a special class that will make this button like fade. Uh, when you click on it, and uh, all all of that stuff. Yeah. So you were kind of like how no like uh, Tailwind right now. You just mm -hmm. write a class and you get like HTML, uh, like a CSS. You don't write CSS. You just write HTML classes. That yeah. that was the approach. So Tailwind is like basically like jQuery of the <laughs> of of CSS. Right, so like right. you will just like write special classes and like everything is kind of like magically working just because there's like a library for that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. now everyone is starting from JavaScript or or like TypeScript now nowadays, right? And they're like, yeah, HTML is that kind of like that kind of like thing we're compiling into like you you look at it when you're like debugging stuff but it's like it's, eh, who cares about that <laughs> are now are you talking about are you differentiating jsx from html because jsx is very common in the react components for example I, I mean like even if uh, you're writing view this is not html you're not writing html right, you're right, right, you're, right. you're writing like it. <laughs> yeah yeah there, there is no v if tag in html right right right, right. It, it, it's it, it's like you you are you, you're learning uh, like javascript how it, how it works and you're like uh, using special javascript templates that turn yeah. into html that that's that's like the the difference in my mind <laughs> yes then that is exactly correct um but I, I i feel like you should know that but i also feel like when i'm working in a view um component or a view file i don't even really think so much of it as like oh this is going to get parsed and um yeah uh, and all that i just think of it as html so that's um interesting right that, that's why that's why i think like for uh that's the same thing for you or like people who like are, are like like view. That, that, that's that's why for them like HTML seems so. closer. Yeah. Because the as I said, like before <laughs> in before times, you would you would write your HTML exactly how you would have like your view uh, template. Mm -hmm. And everything will like just run on the browser. So I think view still has like this this like uh 
uh, like without build step, like way to run view, uh, like petite view or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah, was so, inspired by Alpine, interestingly enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's easy. I'll do it in a weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so petite view is like how how we used to kind of like think about uh, interactivity. Is like you will just like add this class or add this like attribute or or like you will return like HTML and then just like some library will go and like make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why view is like, in a lot of ways, it preserves that kind of like mentality. And that's why like people who write Rails, for example, they love view and they don't want to go into React and like something that is that feels more JavaScript for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Amongst other pain points, <laughs> yeah. From my, so, my personal experience, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so so do you think you're like you're you're uh, you're like landing this view job? Do you think that it's like it it uh, in what way you would use kind of like this uh, this knowledge about like Astro or or like Island to architectures or all of the other ones like crazy ones like Quick or something like or Solid? Like mm -hmm. how how do you kind of like plan to to use that 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 uh, that time that you spent on Twitter like following all the <laughs> all the news? Yeah, that's a good question because parts of the team I know are rewriting the UI in Vue. Um, the the little interactive simulations are also being modernized. So because it's so dynamic, the simulations are very dynamic. Um, I don't feel like Astros or Isles is the right approach for the gizmos. Um, right. Okay. So I, yeah. I want to challenge you on that. Okay. So <laughs> as, uh, uh, I think the problem is with Astro interactivity is like the, the navigation basically between pages. Uh -huh. But once you're on the page, it's like it could be as interactive as you as you as you as you right. want. Uh, if you're if you're like navigating from that page and that content can be like safely destroyed, you won't. Kind of like lose anything if you're if you like right. uh, if you're migrated to Astro. That the problem is with um, hmm, that's a good uh, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, how do I say it? If you are on like a YouTube page, right, and you want to post like a comment, mm -hmm. this could be an Astro app. That's like there's nothing. Kind of like stopping, stopping you from yeah, from yeah. that because like YouTube is like it's just like a video tag uh, like the, the video itself and like yeah. the comments are just like some HTML that you like uh, that is like an app kind of like uh, component it's on a on a database somewhere on a right somewhere oh. but if you want to go from your uh, like a page where you were, were watching video to like browse page. And if like if the components are uh, if, like if comments and video is destroyed, it's fine. But right. if it's starting to play like uh, picture in picture mode, and you and uh, you can still uh, kind of like interact with it, uh, all that stuff. That's where you need like more JavaScript, and maybe like you need yeah. more than Astro can provide right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, or, or is this similar? Is something like you you watch up to one minute thirty nine, and then you go off the page, and then you hit back, and it brings you right back there. So, right. So that 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 part is actually uh, it's kind of like as a uh, Gmail drafts. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you write uh, if you write it to preserve on the server, it yeah. will work like that, and it's actually it it makes a lot of sense to do that because mm -hmm. you could be opening that video on your phone. Right. And there is no way to preserve the like. Uh, there's like the JavaScript object that you have in your browser. It's not <laughs> going to affect your phone. <laughs> it's got to be on the date server side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the data. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, performance is important. I was thinking of school districts with bad Wi-Fi, with like you know hundreds of students on the Wi-Fi. You know, and and I and, and the experience with the Gizmo, it took a, a minute almost two minutes for fully interactive, which is awful, right? At slow 3G. So yeah, I mean, if Astro does have all those, but like you said, I, I'm very curious about when you're actually in production and you start hitting these limits that you didn't see were there and you're like, ah, oh, why did I do this? <laughs> so I guess I would 
use Astro in like a time is in a personal project or a small scale and just see where are those things where it starts to hit the limits and uh, is that a deal breaker or yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, I, I like the, my question was like, are you just procrastinating that you're watching this uh, like uh, Twitter, uh, like new, new technologies or is it, is it actually like a, uh, I don't know. Is this actually will define your like job in a few years? How how you kind of like look at it? Um. I yeah. I mean, from from my perspective, uh, I feel like view. Yeah, you're you're right. It's not lightweight, but I don't feel like it's going to be impacting performance to the point where there's a strong pressure to find a different approach, like an island's approach with Vue. I don't really see that happening just because Vue keeps getting faster and faster and smaller and smaller. Um, interestingly enough, Vue, uh, Evan is exploring um, a non-VDOM approach, Vue Vapor. Hopefully, I mean, I don't think that's going to come up for at least two years because people have so much fatigue from the Vue to, to Options API to Composition API. People are still very mad about that. And the ecosystem, Nux, it's like, is it even summer? <laughs> Nux was supposed to be out. Vuetify was supposed to be out. Those are two huge pieces of the Vue ecosystem that a lot of newbies would say, oh, it's not out yet. I don't know if I want to start Vue because Vitesse does almost everything that Nux does, um, Nux mm -hmm. 3. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I do like that Astro almost relegates the JavaScript frameworks to just a specific part of the tool chain. And it doesn't matter if you're using React or Vue. So it almost, in a sense, Astro just like comes in and says, look, guys, you're not all that. <laughs> Let me, you need help here. Let me help you here. And we'll meet in the middle. And you guys, you know, are not the be all end all of front end web dev. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I was, um, I was talking about more like a, in a, in a meta sense in, in terms of like your career, like how, how important that is. And that's, uh, I, I was uh, like at, at Remix uh, meetup uh, yesterday and we yeah. like chatted with some of the like uh, attendees and it's like, it was cool to, to find some, huh? Kent Dodd, isn't he in Utah? Yeah, yeah Kent, Kent Sedaz, yeah, he was, uh, he was <laughs> presenting there. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was cool that like, uh, to find like some people who are like, do you know that weird like language like uh, Gleam that is like kind of like Rust like but compiles to to Erlang? Yeah, yeah, I know that. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Do you know that weird like uh, Elm uh, language that is oh. kind of like uh, kind of like a ML like a, a functional programming that's like compiled to JavaScript? Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's interesting that there's like there is a uh, I don't know like people who are actually like really care about all of this stuff and like really follow all of the uh, news and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's kind of like pays out. So I, I personally was the one who was like responsible for us to switching to. Uh, so our CTO was like, okay, we need to t uh, switch to TypeScript, and I was like, okay. Once we are doing that, why don't we switch from like Knockout to React? So I had like a call where I was like telling to my CEO that this is why I think it's like it's cool and, and all of that stuff. And it's like at some point, like I were like, okay, we should we should try Tailwind, and, and it was like just just starting right. And so it's like it's cool to like see your kind of like this like I don't know time spent on Twitter to be validated, and it's like. Okay, like yeah, yeah. TypeScript, React, and, and Tailwind is like the the framework, okay. and we started on it like before everyone else did. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's 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 always like, and there's a risk of like, okay, let's do everything in like in CoffeeScript or something like that, and like it went completely nowhere. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so it, it's it's always. Uh, we actually didn't do anything like production for CoffeeScript, but we had like a, a plugin that was written in CoffeeScript. So, yeah. oh, well, <laughs> but, uh -huh. well, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so, so I, and I think it's it's uh, it's it's basically like a balance. So it's cool to know all of this stuff that you can talk with like your fellow developers and like discuss what you think. But yeah. it also can like impact your kind of like For job sure. and, and impact what kind of like companies you work on and, and yeah, so on. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
I was just curious about uh, maybe this might be a nice way to kind of uh, have a fun little summary, but that's a little different from what we've been talking about. But if you look at Svelte and Solid and uh, View and React, am I missing any? Probably those are the big four. You know, what do you, how do you see it all pl playing out? Yeah, that's that's a. <laughs> I had I definitely have an opinion. I but I want that's to actually like a hot uh, a hot topic <laughs> that I, I don't know I don't know if I, I want to get into. But <laughs> to, to finish my thought is like yeah. I think it's it's kind of like important to have a balance and like and uh, bet on like crazy technologies where you think that your your bet will like pay off and uh just just keeping an eye on like stuff so like yeah. my kind of like blog that that i have is like i first wrote it in like next.js then i rewrote it in astro it's like it's small enough that i can i can do that and like i don't um risk anything if that makes sense it's like yeah. uh so i would recommend people to to try this stuff and to have like an, an opinion on that uh, mm -hmm. that you can at least like use on your interview and like uh, talk with like a because when I uh, when I interview someone and they're like they're I don't know like passionate and they they care about all of this stuff and they kind of like go extra mile it's it's a, like a good kind of like check check mark in my book yeah but yeah, when people are like no, no no i just do like the minimal possible stuff on my work and i don't like i don't care about anything that's going to happen in five years mm -hmm. once like once the whole industry is switched to something else then i will i will learn it it's it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a fine approach but it's just it's it's not great getting like a bonus points if that makes sense <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm fair, fairly aligned with you on that. I think uh, I definitely keep my finger on the pulse of what's going out there. And like you said, sometimes you just got to take a risk and dedicate some time to learning something that you think is promising if you trust yourself. Um, so, yeah, I kind of made a, a bet on view. I kind of made, now that we're talking about this, oh, you probably saw a huge improvement, right, in performance going from Next to Astro, like like yeah, yeah, yeah. did. You yeah, did. it was like it was like uh, I don't know, like three seconds to interact with or something like that for like for a simple like just I don't know like a less than one screen like site. So it's like how <laughs> why? Yeah, that's awful. Yeah, oh, but then now with the Astro, it's so yeah. Now it's it's uh, like whatever the like zero point eight or whatever they they're yeah. like uh, the the, the <laughs> yeah yeah. That alone is huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I it's it's yeah. not it's not like the, the funny thing is it's it's like it's a for uh, for poor like uh, Moto 4G or whatever the like the phone is that they're testing on. It's yeah. it's for for those users. So, like if you're opening yeah. your it on your M1 uh, computer, it's like it's pro next is probably like even faster because it's like the you don't have to wait for uh, int uh, like navigation. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, if you have uh, a more global uh, um, market that you're yeah. trying to reach, yeah. Anyway, so this is how I'm going to dodge the framework war <laughs> answer, and uh, I would have to go in like in a few minutes. So uh, I, I guess that that's probably that's probably it for now. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we could like talk about it and like try uh, try this. Uh, uh, a bit buggy, like uh, you saw, you saw like few, few issues with that, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, when Windows, like uh, it wouldn't uh, build from uh, the solid first program. attempt, but it worked on second attempt. So, uh, but this is like, a, I think it's it's important to know about this stuff because I think the island architecture is the the, the thing is like it's so obvious. So I think the other tools are going to say. Why don't we do that? It's it's kind of like it's 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 kind of stupid that we don't do this. And like Solid Start already kind of like has um, similar kind of like features in in works and be unbeatable <laughs> performance wise. Right, and and some something like um, and something like Nox, uh, there's like nothing kind of like stopping them too much to yeah. to to go into like having just like another option of like building into like our architecture or That's something like that. That's a great like that. point because um the Isles whoever made this one the Mas Mas Massimo yeah he was looking at Astro and was like why don't I build my own little engine or whatever you call it islands interactivity engine so 
if it's all open source, like you said, other people can pretty easily add those things. So oh, that's my stomach grumbling. Um, but yeah, it's been really awesome to actually dive into aisles and actually uh, get get my hands dirty in it. So um, next steps will maybe be Astro. Did you have any bug buggy experiences with Astro? Uh, I mean, yes, of course. <laughs> I, st I started when they were like, uh, uh, I think even before they were better or something. So okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, for somebody, a junior dev who, who doesn't you heard the term inner islands architecture, and it's like, what is that? I hope this really cleared up a lot because for me, I feel real comfortable now with where it's going and, and, and just knowing that it's there if I need to write something very mainly static. Yeah, but for now, yeah. I'll, I'll happily t tool around in with my Vitesse setup, yeah. Happy yeah, that, that that that's great. Uh, yeah, I, and uh, I mean, I will I will try to put like a link links to everything uh, that uh, we do, including my <laughs> my astro videos. <laughs> awesome, perfect. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we can we can do kind of like more more discussions like that. Uh, 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 maybe maybe next time you can I don't know, sh show uh, show something to me because like uh, in terms of view I'm actually like I'm really really like underqualified I, I only know like uh, a bits of like that <laughs> that I learned yeah. because uh, we are working like uh, on the view version of our like package so unfortunately I had to learn it yeah 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 yeah. Well, uh, definitely, and I think um, the things that I, I, I can share with you and have more expertise in are things like SVGs, uh, Lottie animations, uh, um, uh, yeah, creating vector art, pixel art, uh, so that's for sure, and then any sort of animation or interactivity, I'd be, I'd be happy to, I'll probably have to prep something for it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, Green well Talk, you know, the animation. Uh, uh, what is green sock? It's called G green GSAP green sock animation. Yeah, I think I've heard about Logi, but not, not about green sock. <laughs> yeah, green sock is all about like uh, the, the, the shape of your animation. So if it's linear, it's just going to move like this, right? But if it's easy and it's going to slow and then come out, right? So it's just de dealing with uh, the way motion accelerates and changes. Okay. Which is so... not that great with vanilla CSS. So that's why these libraries came in to make it better. Yeah. I see. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, th I think I think that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you uh, to waiting through like to set everything up. <laughs> we, we all start somewhere and I, I feel like this was really successful and fun. So uh, at least up for us. So let's see. Yeah, okay, bye-bye.